Scale strokes and effects is a very important option inside of Illustrator, and I'll be demonstrating how it works in a few files in just a minute. But firstly, I would like to just show you some of the many places where you can actually activate this option from. So here inside the properties panel, you can see just down here, scale strokes and effects. The transform panel, from its flat menu, we can turn that on and off from here. Also, if we have some artwork selected, the bottom of the transform panel, that option is also there again, scale strokes and effects. And if I press command or control K, that will jump us into the general section of our preferences. You can see that option is also just here. Okay, so let's demonstrate this thing just now. So I have three identical rings just here. If I select them all in the properties panel, you can see there's a fill of none and a stroke of 30 point. So let's start by turning scale strokes and effects off. I will grab the second ring and scale that up to that guide I have just down the bottom there. And you can see if I select both the first and the second rings just here, they are still both at 30 points in size. So although this guy grew dramatically, the strokes stay the same weight. But if I select this one, excuse me, firstly, I will turn on the scale strokes and effects option. And then let's scale up that third one like so. And there you go. So you can see in this instance, the stroke has actually grown proportionally with the increase in size of the object. Okay, so that's scaling strokes. Let's have a look at this one just here. So this is scaling effects. So I have three red squares here. So they all have a red fill, no stroke, and they all have an effect of drop shadow applied to them. And you can see just here, the um, X and Y offsets are at 15 and the blur is at 12. Okay, so let's do as we did before. Let's turn off scale strokes and effects, holding down my shift key, scale this guy up. So if I select both those first two and look at drop shadow, you can see that has remained unchanged. But of course now if I turn on scale strokes and effects and we scale up this guy here, there we go. You can see the drop shadow has increased proportionally as we increased the size of the object. Just to prove that to you, if I click on the drop shadow options, you can see they've also grown significantly as well. Okay, so let's look at this last file I have just here. So this is a real world example I've created where this scale strokes and effects option could be very important. So I have three little buildings just here. And if I select all of them, you can see they're bunch, just a bunch of individually grouped objects, which all have a fill of white and a stroke of 15 point. Now let's turn scale strokes and effects on because what I'm thinking is I want to make this building in the back much larger. Now let's tuck this in behind this building just here. And then maybe let's scale this guy up a bit just here and move this in here like so. Now this looks okay, but I'm finding this building back here way too ominous. You can see how much thicker these lines are. They've jumped up to 25 point, whereas this one just down here is still at 15 point. So if your aim is to make this look much more ominous, we have achieved that, but I don't think it looks particularly cohesive when looking at all of the buildings just here. So let me undo a few steps just here. And this time let's turn off scale strokes and effects and let's create something very similar. So I'll scale that up and move it back. Let's scale this one up a little bit as well. Move that across. And there we go. So I'm much happier with that. It's produced a much more balanced piece of artwork. So that's it guys. I hope it helps you with your design. That's scale strokes and effects here inside of Illustrator.